and four. So it has two connective components, so that's what we want to have uh, equivalent flags. And it turns out, so they are equivalent, and the matroid corresponding to the phase F1 is the direct sum of these three matroids. So here the, the field circle means it is a matroid on two, and two is an independent set. And this is a matroid on one, but you know, one is not independent. In, we can think that this is this collection of one vector, that the vector, that vector is just the zero vector. And the set of zero vector is not linearly independent. So we don't have, I mean, the empty set is the largest linearly independent set in this case. And this is the matroid on two sets, three and four, and two elements set three and four, and the three and four are linearly independent, I mean, the basis for this matroid. And if you think about the matroid corresponding to this second flag, then it turns out that it's a direct sum of these three matroids. And it turns out that this one is a matroid that has the base 2, 3, and 2, 4. And the second one is also the same matroid on the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, which has 2, 3, and 2, 4 as two bases. And the uh, matroid base polytope corresponding to this, these two flags is the set of, I mean, this edge. Okay. All right, and here's the theorem. So for, I mean, we fix the face of a matrix-based polytope, and then we think about the set of all subsets of n that appears in uh, any, in some factor-connected flag whose corresponding matrix-based polytope is sigma, and then order those subsets by their containment, then it turns out that that poset forms a distributive lattice. And so we can think about, I mean, we can say that that distributive lattice is isomorphic to the set of all the ideas of certain poset. And we can describe the poset in this way. So the poset is, uh, this is a poset on the connected components of the matroid phase polytope, a matroid, matroid corresponding to the given phase. And C i C one is less than C two if and only if sigma lies in the subspace and the hyperplane defined by the set S. And if C two lies in this set, then C one must lie in this set as well. <laughs> oh, the Q of M is the matroid based polytope corresponding to this matroid M F. All right, so this is our previous example. This is a matrix-based polytope. And when you look at this vertex, 3, 4, then the corresponding poset is this poset. <laughs> and when you look at this guy, then this is the corresponding poset. And this two-phase has this as its corresponding poset. And this is the proper part of the base poset of this matrix-based polytope. And these <laughs> color posets are the posets corresponding to each of those spaces. Okay. All right, then let's move on to the next part, so the hyperplane split of a matroid-based polytope. The hyperplane split of a matroid-based polytope is a decomposition of the matroid-based polytope into two, this two, this matroid-based polytopes, where M1 and M2 are matroids, so those two polytopes are matroid polytopes, and their intersection is a proper face of both of those two matroid-based polytopes. Now, here's an example. This is a rank two uniform matroid on four element, and its corresponding matroid-based polytope is this octahedron. And this octahedron can be decomposed into two parts, the top pyramid and the bottom pyramid. And the top pyramid is the one that we had before. No, this, I mean, not the one that we had before, but you know, this is the similar to the one that we had before. This is the matroid corresponding polytope corresponding to this matroid. And the bottom part is the one that we had before. So it's a matroid-based polytope corresponding to this. And their intersection is this square. And intersection is also the matroid based polytope corresponding to some matroid. 
And remember, I mean, in this example, you can see that the hyperplane that splits this matrix-based polytope into two parts is the plane defined by x1 plus x2 equals 1. But we'll use those things later when I give some examples. And I showed that when the hyperplane split of a matrix-based polytope occurs, uh, if M is a rank R matroid on N, and H is a hyperplane in Rn defined using this way, the sum of the coordinate equals K, then H gives a hyperplane split of the matroid-based polytope if and only if the rank of S is greater than K, and rank of its complement is greater than R minus K, and if I1 and I2 are K element independent subsets of S such that these matroids have the same rank, R minus K, then two matroids must be the same. And in fact, just these con the first condition describes when a hyperplane splits some, I mean, any polytope without introducing new, new vertices. And here's an example, the one that we had before, and remember that the hyperplane that gives the hyperplane split is the set of all elements given by x1 plus x2 equals 1. So in this notation, s is set of 1, 2, and k is 1. And rank of s is rank of the set of 1 and 2, and we have two independent elements. So rank of this part is 2, which is greater than our k. And rank of s complement, the so s complement is 3, 4, and it has two linearly independent elements, so the rank of S complement is also two that is strictly greater than one. So it satisfies the first condition. And also, if you think about the matroid, M is con contracted on I1 and then restricted on the complement of S, then here you can see that the M contracted on I1 is the matroid on 2, 3, and 4, which has basis 2, 3, and 4. And because we contract, I mean, we restrict on the S complement, this is a matroid on the set of 3 and 4, whose basis are set of, I mean, just 3 and 4. And for the second set, I2, for the set of 2, so M contracted on I2 is a matroid on 1, 3, 4, which has basis 1, 3, and 4, and when you restrict that matroid on the complement of S, you're going to get this basis, 3 and 4, which is the same as the one coming from I1. So they have the same matroid. Now, by looking at this, you can see that this hyperplane gives a hyperplane split of the matroid based polytope, which we saw in the previous slide. Okay, and if the matroid has rank 2, then it has a much nicer expression. Uh, if M is a rank 2 matroid on N, and H is a hyperplane in Rn defined by the sum of the coordinate equals 1, and in the rank 2 case, this is the only possible hyperplane that can split a matroid-based poly matroid polytope into two parts. Okay. And then H gives a hyperplane split of QM if and only if S and S complement are both unions of at least two parallelism classes. In a rank 2 case, uh, every matroid can be described using the compositions of M. And if each, I mean, then, so, I mean, for example, in this case, uh, these things are parallelism classes. So we have only one. I wasn't here, I'm on one here, and so on. And in the previous example, where we have two para vectors, and one parallelism class is set of one, two, and the other one is three, and the third one is four. And we use the same, same matroid as the previous example, and set of S is one, two, and S, can be writ S is one, two, that can be written as a union of these two parallelism classes. And as complement is 3, 4, that can be written as those two, I mean, those two parallelism classes. So that shows, or this also shows that the hyperplane x1 plus x2 equals 1 gives a hyperplane split for this matroid. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, then I'd like to move on to the CD index of a polytope, that is some 
the uncovenanted polynomial defined for any polytub. Uh, here's the definition. So, uh, before I give the definition of the CD index, I'm going to tell you some more definitions. If Q is any polytub of dimension n, then the flag f vector of Q is the collection of 2 to the n vectors, where S is a subset of 0 through n minus 1, and FQ of S is the number of flag of bases such that the dimension of those bases is given by the set S. So I'll, I'll give an example in a minute. And the flag H vector of Q is a collection of 2 to the n vectors and that is obtained from F of Q using these equations. And the AB index of a polytope is a non commutative <laughs> polynomial defined by the sum of all the H vectors of S times U0 times U1 times all the way up to UN minus 1, where UIs are either A or B, and it is A if I is not in the set, given set S, and B if I is in the given set S. Okay. So here's an example. Well, this is our polytope. I mean, I mean, there I just assume that this is just a polytope, not a matroid-based polytope. And we think about the flex, so it's going to be the S is just the empty set, or just the singleton set, or the two element set, and then the whole set. Okay, those are all the possible subsets of the set from 1, 0, 1, and 2. And for the empty set, this means the flag vector FQ of S is the number of all the flag, I mean all the empty flag. So that's actually the, just the empty face is the only face that satisfies this. So we have only one face. And the this, so second thing is when S is 0, this means the number of zero dimensional faces. That's the number of vertices. And this polytope has five vertices. So S Q of the set of zero is five. And when S is 1, that means the number of edges. So it has 8 edges. And when S is 2, it's the number of 2 faces. So we have 5 2 faces. And when we have 2 elements, 0 and 1, then this is the number of flag of the 0 dimensional face and the 1 dimensional face. And the 1 dimensional face must contain the 0 dimensional face. Okay. So for this vertex, we have 4. 0, 1 flag, and for each of those four vertices on the bottom part, we have three 0, 1 flags. So total we have 16 0, 1 flags. And for 0, 2, this is the flag well, of the vertex contained in two dimensional phase. And also for the top part, we have four such 0, 2 phase, uh, 0, 2 flag. And for the bottom vertices, we have three for each of those three, uh, those four vertices. So we have 16, and 1, 2 is the edge contained in a two phase, and each edge are contained in two phase, two two phases. So we have 16, so 1, 2 flag, and 0, 1, 2 flag is the flag of the vertex, and then edge, and then two phase. And you can see that it, there are 32 <coughs> such flags. And then we apply the, this formula to get the H vector, flag H vector of the polytope. And it turns out that it is 1 and 4, and 4 is obtained by 5 minus 1, and then 7 is obtained by 8 minus 1, and five, uh, 4 is obtained by 5 minus 1. And then here, for the, zero, the, for the set 0, 1, to get the H vector, we subtract the number of 1 vector, I mean, the number of I mean, the flag vector corresponding to the set 0 and flag vector corresponding to the set 1. Well, we subtract those two numbers from the 16 and then add this number back to the ones. Then you get 4 and you get 7, 4, and 1, and so on. Okay. And it turns out that for the polytopes, this flag H vectors are symmetric. And these are the a B monomials, we remember that A, I mean, the empty set does not contain 0, so we put A there A in the first place, and empty set does not contain 2 and 3 as well, I mean, zero, 1 and 2 as well, so we have 
three A's. And for example, for zero, one, zero, it, this contains zero, so we have B there, B in the first place, and B in the second place, but this set does not contain two, so we have A in the third place. And remember that these AB monomials are not commutative. So you cannot change the order of those th things. So by adding those AB monomials with these coefficients, you can get this polynomial, this non-commutative polynomial. So I order them using the lexicographic <coughs> order. So A cubed plus 4 times A squared B, that comes from here, and so on. And there's a fact that the AB index of a polytope can be written uniquely as a non commutative polynomial of A plus B and AB plus BA. <laughs> and in that case, the rewriting, this rewriting is called the AB index of Q and denoted by phi of Q. There is an example, the previous example, that we know that AB index of this polytope is this non commutative polynomial, and you can see that that can be written as a plus b cubed plus 3 times a plus b times a b plus b a, and plus 3 times a b plus b a times a plus b. <coughs> Remember, this is the non commutative polynomial, and when we replace a plus b by c and a b plus b a by d, you get this polynomial. Okay. Uh, and then also, if you have this polynomial, then you can easily recover the AB index of the polytope, and once you have the AB index of the polytope, you can easily recover the flag f vector of the given polytope. And the AB index, you know, in this example, AB index has eight terms, but the CD index has only three terms, so it's somehow the compact way of recording all the flag information about a polytope. And yeah, to tell you about some results, all your results about the CD index of a polytope, I'm going to define some sort of operations on the polytope. If B is a vertex of the polytope Q, and if Lx is C, is the supporting hyperplane of Q defining B, then that means that the, the polytope lies on, entirely on one side of this hyperplane. And this hyperplane intersected with the polytope is this vertex B. And the face figure of the polytope of B is defined to be the intersection of the polytope with the only shift this supporting hyperplane toward the polytope. Then we can think about the intersection of the polytope with this shifted hyperplane. And you can see that the, this vertex, the combinatorial type of this vertex figure does not depend on any of those things. That only depends on the vertex B. Okay, so that does not depend on this L, that does not depend on C, and that does not depend on delta as well. The combinatorial type has the same. And for the face of sigma, the face figure is defined to be this iterated vertex figure. First we Think about the vertex figure of Q over the sigma zero, and with some zero dimensional phase. And then when we think about this vertex figure, sigma one, this is the one phase, turn out to be a vertex of this vertex figure. So we can apply the vertex figure once again, and then we keep applying the vertex figures, then you can see, I mean, where this <laughs> the Q, sigma zero, sigma one up to sigma k is a maximal chain with dimension of sigma i is equals i. And then we define the phase figure in this way. And here's the fact that for two phases, sigma and tau of q, where tau is a subface of, I mean, sigma is a subface of tau, then the phase lattice of the phase figure tau over sigma is isomorphic to the interval in the phase poset of the original polytope. All right, and here's a theorem about the CD index. When Q is a polytope, and Aaron Morgan already showed this theorem about the, how to find the CD index of these new polytopes. So the pyramid over Q has CD index written in this summation, 
and the prism over Q has this CD index, and the bipyramid over Q has this CD index, where those sums are over all proper faces sigma of Q. And later, the Aaron Morgan box also shows that for the polytopes P and Q, the CD index of the product of two polytopes can be computed from the CD index of P and CD index of Q. And the formula is not <laughs> so easy, but we do know how to find the CD index of the product of two polytopes. And then, the, um, I try to, um, I generalize this formula for the case when we have when we have some hyperplane intersecting the relative interior of the polytope, so the Q is a polytope and H is a hyperplane that intersecting the relative interior of Q, then the CD index of a polytope Q can be written as this summation, where the sum, the sum is over all the face sigma <laughs> that meets the both open half spaces obtained by H non-trivially. And here's an example. This is our polytope, one, two, three, four. This is just a two-dimensional polytope. And think this is a hyperplane, H. Then the CD index of the whole polytope, one, two, three, four, can be written as the CD index for the top part. So this is this triangle, one, two, five, plus the CD index for the bottom part, this quadrilateral. And then minus the CD index of the intersection of the polytope with the hyperplane times the C. Uh, it's, the intersection is this, two, this H, 1, 5, the so CD index of 1, 5 times C. And then the sum of the CD index of the intersection of the face with the hyperplane times the D times the intersection of the face figure over that one. So in this case, this, and the sum is over all the proper faces that intersect in both open half spaces. So in this case, there's only one face that intersects both half spaces. So for example, this guy intersects H, but that does not intersect open half spaces. That's not what we want. So this is only one that we have. And in this case, the C index of 5 times D times the face figure of 2, five, two 3 over base figure of this over this vertex phi. So that gives us the CD index of the whole polyton. And let me apply this to the case of the rank 2 matroid. Uh, if the rank 2 matroid do not have any loop, then it determines up to isomorphism by the compositions of n that gives the sizes of the parallelism classes. Like if we have this matroid, the one that we had before, then the first parallelism class has two vectors, and this guy has a one, and this guy has one. So two, one, one is a composition that corresponds to this matroid. And we can show that the, using the previous results that the CD index of a matroid-based polytope for rank 2 matroid can be expressed using the CD indices of the matroid-based polytopes for rank 2 matroid corresponding to compositions with three or less parts. Now, here we have only have three parts, but we could have you know, some matroid looks like this. So it may have lots of parts. And by using some way, you can express the CD index for the matroid based polytope corresponding to this rank 2 matroid in terms of the CD indices of the matroid based polytope corresponding to the compositions with three or less parts. And here's a fact if alpha has only one part, and that means that we have only one parallelism classes, and in that case, the matroid based polytope is an simplex, the alpha 1 simplex. And if it has two parts, alpha 1 and alpha 2, then the matroid based polytope corresponding to that can be written as the product of two simplices. And the, this is sort of the precise version, I'm not going to go into detail, but the matroid based polytope corresponding to m alpha, and alpha is some composition of m, and the CD index of that matroid based polytope can be written as this sum where the lambda is something from the composition alpha that has only three parts, and these mu 
is something that comes from alpha. It has only two parts. Uh, I will give some examples here. And, and this term, this sum, is sum over all the compositions that are less than alpha, and then do these things. <coughs> and so here, I want to look at the, this composition, 2, 2, 1, 1. And the seed index of this can be written as, first, we have you know, several seed index for the matrix-based polytope, matrix polytope corresponding to the composition with three parts. So the way I do is just pick some intermediate part and then merge some previous parts and merge the parts of appears later than this red part. So we got two, two, two as one of the composition with three parts. And then we have another one that has three parts. So I'll just choose this part and then merge the previous parts and merge the parts appears later. So four, one, one is another one. And we only have two intermediate parts of the given composition. So those two are the ones that appears in this sum. And in the second sum, we think about some composition that has only two parts. It's basically obtained by you know, the merging first k and the first i parts, and then merging the later, and the remaining parts. And the point is we must merge at least two parts to get these compositions. So 4, 2 is the one that we have. And in this case, we the beginning one has only four parts. So this is the only one appears in this part. And for the next sum, we think about the composition that is smaller than alpha. In other words, alpha i and the beta i's are always less or equal to alpha i's for all i. So the, the first diagram, so the first diagram for beta lies entirely inside the first diagram for the alpha. Okay. And then do the similar thing that we had before had here. So we merge you know, first k part of first i parts, and then first merge the remaining parts to get these make with mean, this composition. So three, two is the one that we had, and another one is <coughs> also three two, but that obtains from this composition. And also this is another one that we have, and. M22 is the one that comes from this. Okay. So we can express the seed index of the matroid based poly on the rank 2 matroid corresponding to the composition in terms of the composition with three parts and two parts and one part. Okay. So, so here's my future work. So find the matroid formula for the seed index of the QM for hyperplane split, what I mean by it. That is, okay. so here I had a theorem that the seed index of a polytope when Q is any polytope and H is a hyperplane intersecting this. And what if we have a matroid based polytope and we know which hyperplane split into two pieces. So in that case, I try to, I want to sh express this in terms of matroid. Okay. And here, because uh, H is, a, I mean, the, we think about the hyperplane split of a matroid based polytope. This guy is a matroid based polytope, and Q plus is a matroid based polytope on one side of the hyperplane, and Q minus is another one. So then Q, I mean, Q hat is the intersection of the polytope with the hyperplane, and we, show, we saw that that one also is a matroid based polytope. And this part is a, also a matroid based polytope, but you know, for that part, I don't know whether. The face figure of a matroid based polytope is also a matroid based polytope or not. Now, I'll, I'm trying to <laughs> show that matroid, matroid formula for the hyperplane split case, but I don't get the results yet. And next thing I want to do is find a simple formula for the CD index of rank 2 matroid corresponding to compositions with three parts. And we have a fact that if alpha has only one part or only two parts, then the matroid-based polytope is written 
I mean, is actually just the simplex or the product of two simplices. And it is known that for the simplices, the, the, for the n simplex, uh, its CD index is n plus first on red polynomial. And the Aaron work in box shows the, that the product of the two polytopes, I mean, CD index of product of polytopes can be written as the CD index of each polytope. So we can somehow compute this, this part and this part and this part from the previous result. But for that one, the one that corresponds to the composition of three with three parts, we don't know the simple formula yet. So my next project is find the simple formula for the CD index for the rank 2 matroid corresponding to compositions with three parts. And the last thing uh, that I want to do is find the explicit CL labeling for the base post set of QM. Uh, and when a matroid based polytope, when a, when a matroid is given, then you can think about a matroid based polytope and think about the base post set of the matroid based polytopes. And if we can find a CL labeling for this post set, then the Proutil has a theorem that when a post set has CL labeling, then it knows how to describe the CD index of that poset. And I have to say that we can, I mean, in this talk, I just defined the CD index for the polytopes, but CD index can be defined for a bigger class. So CD index can be defined for the so called Eulerian poset. And the face poset is an example of the Eulerian poset. So if we can find the uh, explicit CL labeling, then we can describe the CD index of this matroid based polytope using sort of that way. So that's 